and at present, of course, Madam Speaker, is the leadership of the city and county of San Francisco. Uh, the tallest person in the room, or maybe the second tallest person in the room, is that handsome debonair, soon to be no longer a bachelor, mayor of San Francisco, the Honorable Gavin Newsom. of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors, Supervisor Aaron Peskin. I saw Supervisor, well, Sophie Maxwell. I saw Supervisor Sophie Maxwell. I also saw three or four members of the California State Assembly, Sandra Swanson, who's here. Mary Hosh, she is here. Right. Who is part of the I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight because one of the jobs of speaker is to raise a ton of money to make sure that her membership gets re-elected and that new members get elected. And it is the speaker's job to shield those people from all of the kind of horror associated with money raising. She has to take all of the hits for whatever the money is, she has to raise all of the money, and then invariably somebody will demonstrate ingratitude by her assistance. So you can imagine how difficult and what a great challenge it is to succeed in this regard. There is no doubt in my mind, however, that this the 67th Speaker of the California State Assembly. Can you imagine, in all the years that California has been in existence, they've had 67 speakers, only three that are African Americans, only three that are Latino, and only two that were women. It's an incredible chapter in our history, because starting in about 1980, we started to change that and we have been changing it dramatically. The most, however, significant change in this century is the elevation of Karen Bass to the job of speaker. No other African-American female has ever headed a legislative body in this nation. Karen Bass is the very first. And the most interesting thing about Karen Bass is she's not even close to being a politician. She is so distant from being a politician that it is indeed frightening. She has zero ego, which means automatically you're not in politics. She is as informed, if not more so, than almost any other member of the legislature on all of the issues that affects the lives of people. She has an incredible reputation for having evolved to the job of being an elected official rather than seeking the job of being an elected official by virtue of her actual community-based operation in Los Angeles County. She is singularly the most unusual politician that I've had an opportunity to be associated with, and I'm glad you're all here tonight to welcome her to San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, Karen Bass. So I thank you very much. And to the speaker, the mayor, Mr. Brown, he's still the speaker to me. He's still the speaker to all of us. I, mean, I do have to tell you a little story. 
sorry about Mr. Brown because right after I was elected, I went in search of Mr. Brown because I'm a person that believes in whatever you're doing, you look for somebody that did it before you and you recruit mentors, you recruit people who have been there before. So I went in search of Mr. Brown and it took me a while to, to track him down and to get him to spend some time with me, but I told him I just wanted to spend time with him and just hear what he had to say. And I read his biography, went and met him in his office and quizzed him for a good two hours. And uh, for me, he's been a mentor and a guy ever since then. And I do have to tell you that when we were having the speakership race, and he introduced Assemblymember Hayashi and Assemblymember Swanson, who were a part of my leadership team. And there's Assemblymember Fiona Ma. We had a tough race for speaker. There were a lot of candidates that were running. And you know, anytime you're in a race, you have your ups and downs. And you have those moments where you really question what you're doing. And so, uh, not much to my surprise, the former speaker, Speaker Fabian Nunez, called Speaker Brown and told Speaker Brown that I needed a little bit of a pep talk. So <laughs> Speaker Brown got on the phone and he said, Bass, what's the matter with you? <laughs> he said, don't you understand history? I said, yeah, I do understand history, Mr. Brown, but I also understand this $15 billion budget deficit. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he had to set me straight and make sure that I understood that this was a job that not only I should take, but it was a job that I was going to take. But he also let me know that he would be there for me too. And so I told him about 15 minutes ago that I was going to call him tomorrow because I needed his advice on the budget. And he laughed at me and he said, are you crazy? <laughs> tomorrow because he's going to give me advice since tomorrow is the beginning of our fiscal year. We don't have a budget yet. I'm confident that we will get there. But uh, anyway, I am looking forward to continuing to work with him and making sure that he will continue to be a guide to me throughout this process. I'm also looking forward to welcoming a new assembly member, Tom Amiano. in January and we look forward to him coming and being a part and as Mr. Brown said one of my primary responsibilities is making sure that not only I bring back the 48 members of the caucus who are there now but actually we increase the number yes. of the caucus. Yes. Yes. I, I have to tell you that this is just such a phenomenal year this is a year where I am confident that come November, we are going to have a new president, but not just any president. And we are all celebrating on election day the election of President Obama. We will also be celebrating several more seats in the assembly to make sure that we not only have a caucus of 48, but we grow that caucus by at least three members. So I want to thank all of you for your support. That's why your support is so needed. And uh, this has just been an incredible welcome to San Francisco. And I look forward to coming back many, many, many all times. Right. Yeah. 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 All right, please. Continue to enjoy yourself, but be sure you think the man who owns this place, if you see him. Michael Johnson owns Yoshi's here in San Francisco. And as Commissioner Tim Simon just bought it over there from the PNC. Um, you should know that he, Michael, extends himself, sometimes overextends himself. For all of us to be able to have events in this community. I believe the Bar had an event here uh, several months ago, and we've had other people that had events here, and I believe that there will be a continuous opportunity for you to enjoy yourself by coming to Yosius for the great shows, the great program that he puts on here, as well as for the collectible food that's often served here. So please, enjoy yourself, drink, 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 and then let me represent you for driving drunk.